glad to follow my colleague. Um, I think he stated it best. Um, you know, I agree with both sides. It's a bit of a dilemma to be um, uh, in this position. But, um, you know, as the committee has noted more than, uh, you know, a billion dollars, billion passengers in plane at U.S. airports on domestic and foreign carriers in 2018. The Federal Aviation Administration anticipates this number will increase. Passenger employments on U.S. carriers alone are expected to rise $1 billion annually by 2028 and to $1.3 billion by 2038. U.S. airports have estimated a total of $128 billion in infrastructure needs to keep up with the current demand for plan for demand and plan for expected passenger growth between 2019 and 2023. Uh, this need outweighs the current pro projected federal spending for airport improvement projects. Passenger facility charges or PFCs are not the only source of airport infrastructure funding, nor will they create nor were they created for that purpose. Airports' largest source of revenue comes from fees that they control. Landing fees, airline changes, and revenue from concessions, parking rental, um, car rentals, and other services. And raising these fees could be done easily without an act of Congress. So finally, here's my question. Um, why is there such a focus on increasing PFCs? Can airports find other ways to raise revenue and that will, not, will limit the financial impact on the most important participant in this whole system, and that's the passenger? Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, Congressman. We do, have, we do have the ability. I mean, the airports are basically run by user fees. Landing fee is a user fee, so when you land on a runway, we charge you a certain amount. A parking fee is a user fee because you used concrete overnight and you, st you stored your car. So we set those fees. The, the passenger facility charge is a fee on passengers who use our facilities, and it's paid by all passengers. We want the people who fly in from Cleveland and the people from Chicago and the people from New York who fly into Tampa to pay their fair share. If I raise the parking rate, then only the people in Tampa are paying for that. It, I think it's incumbent on the passengers who use the facility to pay their fair share. And that's why I think the increase in the PFC is right. Anyone else? Representative Payne, um, I would just echo what Mr. Lopano said. Um, it surprises uh, people sometimes when we talk about how our airports earn revenue. Um, and in Spokane, uh, which I think is uh, representative of many small airports, uh, airline fees only amount to about 30 percent. So we are already out there maximizing all of the non-airline or non-aeronautical revenues that we possibly can. And the, the, the reason for that is to keep costs lower to the airline partners. So we really work hard to maximize those non-airline revenues. And I would also say, as Mr. Lopano pointed out, is that the, the PFC is a very um, elegant fiscal uh, sustainability mechanism because it divides the cost of running the facility across these, those who use it and not just limits it to, for instance, the taxpayers of a certain municipality that may be the sponsor of the airport. So in Spokane, our market area is very large, as I mentioned in my opening remarks. Uh, two provinces of Canada, uh, several states, uh, probably over 1.3 million people. So it would be disproportional for the taxpayers of Spokane County or the city of Spokane to pay the entire costs associated with the capital program of Spokane International Airport when it serves a large area like that and that many people. Okay. Well, thank you. And um, um, I'll yield back, Mr. Chairman. I thank gentlemen.